Hello folks, how are you doing? I hope that I find you all well as usual and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea. Or if you're new, a warm welcome to you also. This is What's For Tea and my name is Cheryl and tonight I'm just going to be showing you a very easy classic gingerbread with icing on top. But I think it's just lovely with the, you know, the combination of the, because it's quite a dry cake or a dry bread. So I think the wet you know, the, the wet icing on top, it's a lovely contrast, but I think classically it would just be the gingerbread, but I'm going to be using icing on mine today. So this is what I'm using if you want to follow along. And as usual, all the ingredients and their weights will be in the description box down below. So I've got grams and I've got ounces and I've also got cups down there as well, just in case you want to check it out from whatever country you're in. Yep. So first of all, I've got two teaspoons of bicarbonate of soda, five teaspoons of ground ginger, two teaspoons of cinnamon, 400 grams of icing sugar or confectioner sugar, 300 ml which is about half a pint of milk, 375 grams of plain flour, 250 grams of dark muscovado sugar, 225 grams of black treacle, two eggs, and you'll also need four or five bits of crystallised ginger. Now that's completely optional. You don't have to use that. I just like to throw in to add, you know, another wee bit of sort of uh, gingery zing, but you don't have to use that. And I've also got 250 grams of unsalted room temperature butter. Oof. <laughs> so let's go and see what's next. So this is the black treacle that I'm using. And if you're using this size of can, you'll be using about half of this. And you're also going to need some kind of tin. Now I'm using a loaf tin and this one is 10 inches, but you can use, you know, round tins if you prefer. So first thing we're going to do is grab ourselves a mixing bowl and to that you're going to add your flour. This is plain flour. And then your ground ginger. And then your cinnamon and you just want to give these a good mix together i just like to use a fork but you can use a whisk if you like or a spoon whatever you like just make sure it's well combined so you can set that aside for the time being now you're going to go over to the cooker you'll need two pans and pop both of them onto a low heat and in your largest pan you want to pop your butter now this is a whole block of butter <laughs> You just want to melt this down. So we're going to melt down our butter and our sugar and our treacle and just mix it all together until it's nice and smooth. And in the other pan you can pop your milk and just put it onto a low heat. You just want to warm that. So then your sugar in with your butter and then your treacle. You just want to keep both of these on a low heat and just keep stirring your treacle, butter and sugar until all your sugar has dissolved and it's all beautifully combined and smooth. It should look like melted chocolate when you're done, just like this. And this will take you three or four minutes. Now, don't worry at the beginning, you think, oh my goodness, this isn't working. <laughs> it does come together in the end. So you can turn off your milk and turn off your sugar and get back over to your bowl. So into your bowl, you want to put your mixture from earlier. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grate two or three pieces of this stem ginger. I'm going to use the smallest hole in my grater. But like I said, you don't have to use this. This is just something that I do because it adds a nice wee punch of flavour. Then once your mixture has cooled slightly, you can go ahead and add that into your dry ingredients. Just give it a wee stir around and then you can pop your eggs in as well. And give these a good old mix. You want to get this thoroughly combined and again, your end result will look something like melted chocolate. And there you go, lovely. You get back over to your cooker and warm your milk up again. You just want to warm this to the point where it's just starting to simmer. You can pop in your bicarbonate of soda. Just make sure you're using a pan big enough because this will fizz up or foam up. But you want to let this foam away for about 30 to 40 seconds, up to a minute. 
and then you can pop that in on top of your dark brown mixture. And again, you just want to stir all of this through, keep on mixing, and you'll end up again with a mixture that looks like melted chocolate. This will just take you a few minutes. And again, don't worry at this stage if you think, oh my goodness, this doesn't look right. It will come together. A wee bit of, you know, a wee bit of elbow grease in three or four minutes and you'll have something that looks like this. And that's your mixture done, guys. So all you have to do now is grab your tin, whatever you're using. Like I said, I'm using, this is a two pound loaf tin and I actually had some left over to make some wee cakes as well and I'll show you that at the end. So I gave my one 50 minutes, but you can give it up to an hour. You just want to insert a wooden skewer and if it comes out clean, obviously it's ready. So this was mine just out of the oven 50 minutes later. Now I'm going to let this cool completely in the tin before I go ahead and ice it. But you can take yours out of the tin just now if you prefer. This is just what I do. So as you can see, that's coming out clean. So that is ready. And looking smashing, I think. So I'm just about to ice mine. So I'm going to put my icing into the bowl. So that's the icing sugar. And to that, I'm going to add some boiling water. Three or four tablespoons should do it. You want this thick, but not too thick. You still want to be able to, you know, pour it onto your cake. And I'm also going to add a wee bit of flavouring. Again, this is completely optional. You don't have to do this. I just think it gives it a nicer flavour. So that was just what I was looking for. Thick, but still runny. And I'm just going to plop this straight on top of my cake. And that's where that paper at the side comes in handy there because it doesn't all go running off. And it's also handy to lift your cake out, you know, at the end when it's set. It makes it a lot easier. And I'm just going to finish off with a few more pieces of that grated crystallised ginger on the top, just because I had a wee bit spare. So I'm just going to pop this into the fridge and let this set. Now, I didn't get to let mine set as long as I wanted because people were saying, is it not ready yet? Is it not ready yet? So mine's wasn't completely set, but yeah, it was good enough. And this is mine just out of the paper. Lovely. And I'm just going to cut three slices. And it was beautiful, guys. It really, really was beautiful. If you like gingerbread, you know, you're going to love this recipe. And it's so nice at this time of the year. It just reminds me of Christmas time. It really does. Actually, coming up at Christmas, I'm actually going to be doing a Yule log, which is very festive. So I'm looking forward to doing that one. I've got a few festive recipes up my sleeve, but that's going to be one of them. So I'm just going to take a wee bite of this just to let you see. Like I said, the icing isn't completely set yet because people in this house are impatient. <laughs> but ideally, I'd have let this set for another couple of hours. And this is lovely with a wee cup of tea. Or if you're having it for a pudding, you know, it's lovely with custard and ice cream as well. As you can see, it's so moist and falling apart. It's lovely. So yeah, that gets the thumbs up from me and it got the thumbs up from everyone else as well. So this keeps really well as well, you know, in an airtight container. Like I said, I had enough for six of these wee buns as well. I'm, I'm missing one. <laughs> Somebody has stolen one. That always happens in this house. Whenever I make anything, you turn your back, you know, and you turn around again, there's two or three things missing. But hey-ho, what can you do? But like I say, it does keep really well in an airtight container. For up to four days, I would say, after that, it's starting to go downhill again. But things don't tend to last that long in this house anyway, so I don't, I don't usually have a problem with that. I don't know if it freezes well. I've never actually, you know, tried to freeze it before, so I couldn't tell you about that. Because people do normally ask when I bake things, you know, can you freeze them? You know, how do you store them? That kind of thing. So I would just keep this in an airtight container. And as for freezing, I've no 
idea. So that was my wee gingerbread recipe, guys. Like I said, it went down so, so well. And it wasn't actually a recipe I was planning on showing you. It was last week, you know, when I offered the gingerbread or the other recipe. Ended up doing the other recipe and so many of you were wanting to see the gingerbread as well. So I thought, oh, I'm going to pop that up next week just to let you see. But I'm also going to be doing another recipe during the week. This is just a wee kind of bonus recipe. And we're going to be having bolognese stuffed pasta shells you know these great big giant pasta shells so i'm going to be doing that and covering it up with some cheese sauce and some cheese so it's going to be a bit like a, a lasagna in a way but instead of the you know the flat sheets it will be giant pasta shells so already looking forward to that so hopefully you'll join me for that so thank you very much guys again for popping over and checking out my wee recipe this time and thank you once again to all you guys who leave your comments and your thumbs up and you know all your, your lovely words of encouragement. It does mean ever so much. So until I see you next, mind to take care of yourselves and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye for now. Bye now.